Hey YouTube Raspberry Hackers, Chris here. Wanted to shoot a little video here showing my latest home brew. Got nothing better to do sit at my desk Raspberry Pi projects here. I've uh I've been really I'm really interested in uh sampling uh real time well, I don't know if it's real time, but sampling a uh an input source a sinusoidal input source using an A to D converter into a Raspberry Pi. This little project here that I've got going on, I've married a Texas Instruments MSP430 to a Raspberry Pi 2 running some older flavor of Jesse. And I'm using the I squared C bus to connect the two together. And right now I've got a uh, homebrew function generator, sinusoidal function generator input into analog channel 0 on the MSP430 and using DMA which is triggered from the I square C exchange initiated from the Raspberry Pi I'm triggering A to D samples and so I'm effectively uh, sampling a sinusoidal input into the Raspberry Pi for FFT analysis. I'm going to swing over here for a second to the uh, to my computer here and tell you what's going on over here. Now I've got a little cheap little uh, function generator inputting in well, right now it's about uh, 100 Hertz and you can see here the top this is this the Raspberry Pi is building a web page in in uh, host it's hosting a web page with these two graphs using GNU plot so the top trace is basically I've, I'm inputting right now I'm inputting roughly about a hundred Hertz which is being sampled by the MSP 430 and the 12 bit conversions are being transferred down to the Raspberry Pi via the I squared C bus I'm doing a 4095 point FFT using the GNU FFT algorithm so kindly made public by that Broadcom engineer which is a very fast FFT and uh, I'm actually additionally to the function generator inputting a sinusoid I'm digitally programmatically you actually uh, summing a 30 Hertz and an 800 Hertz sinusoid with the function generators input which is right now is producing that and if you look at the bottom graph well the top graph is the windowed IF I'm running a handing window across to the data and then the bottom trace is the GNU plot embedded into a web page showing you the spectral peaks I can see up here I've got a uh, I'm putting in about a hundred Hertz and you can see the three peaks of the three individual frequency components of this waveform of these 4096 points now I've also implemented a digital filter with a 40 Hertz high pass cutoff. One of these waveforms summed is 30 Hertz. So right now you can see down here this is 30 this is the bin with the side you can see the side lobes on all these. This is the 30 Hertz bin and if I turn the filter on that bin disappears. Okay, that's pretty cool, huh? Some it uh exhibits some pretty nice beat frequencies as you turn the uh, frequency up 
on the function generator you can see the shift in frequency okay that's a rather interesting looking signal alright well I took some scope captures today and uh, the neat thing about this whole project is the fact that I'm using the interrupt handler in the MSP430 to trigger the conversions. The Raspberry Pi using the wiring Pi library is initiating a transfer of data from the MSP and then this blue trace here is actually just a debug blip and I think now since they're 12 bit transfer it's a 12 bit conversion so essentially my I think I gotta think about that a little bit more about the actual sampling rate because it takes two transfers to get one A to D conversion so I'm not too sure about that yet but all the math works out as far as the graphs I'm not showing any anomalies or anything it's like the, there'd be there's no jitter here which surprises me more than anything else so that kind of tells me that internal to the Raspberry Pi it might be doing DMA on these long large block transfers of the uh, in the using the I squared C bus I don't know I don't care it, the jitter seems acceptable to me. If I had any excess jitter, you would see some some pretty shitty anomalies probably happening here in the in the in the trace in the uh, actual uh, window to windowed samples. So I'm kind of happy about that, and I'm also ha very happy about the uh, the. Uh, clarity now well the, the 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 spectral purity there's there's no other noise here so that tells me that we're doing a pretty good job sampling um, the IIR filter um, works pretty well too so I right now it's it's on so it's filtering out that 30 Hertz signal the knee is at 40 40 Hertz so if I uh, turn that filter back on, this spectral peak, or I'm sorry, I had it on, I turned it off, and now you see this, this 30 hertz peak pop back up in here. So let's go up in frequency, we'll go up to about, we'll put in uh, about 1 kilohertz. So you can see, you're still seeing three frequency components and let's turn off the zoom factor so I can show all it is it we're doing I'm doing a uh, a 4095 point FFT which is kindly provided by the Broadcom engineer who released that code so everybody could use it so here we're up about 15 kilohertz these are these are bins down here and here up here is showing me my frequency. So uh, so with all of this, with these efforts here so far, I'm thinking about trying to do a homebrew radar gauge, like a, a a radar measuring system. I've seen some folks use coffee cans as the waveguides and antennas. So I'm thinking about trying my hand at doing a FMCW radar with uh, a Raspberry Pi. I think that would be a pretty cool project. So it seems as though these results here of the ability to sample an IF from a mixer are very promising here. That's some pretty, you get some pretty cool looking beat frequencies but anyway, oh, I wanted to show you these pictures here. I took some scope captures while I was doing some measurements here. I have a this these this is be like uh, I'm inputting like an 11 kilohertz signal, and this is a debug blip from just a general port pin on the MSP430 in the interrupt handler. 
and then you can see here's the uh, the uh, I square C clock I square C data and then the blips so every two of these is one conversion you know and here's it's just kinda cool the way a scope decodes the I squared C so back to this but anyway um, it's very promising here that uh, it's possible that I might be able to actually after figuring out some sort of RF circuitry to uh, to uh, sample an IF from a from a soup can radar. Now I have no idea what uh, what band and you know something in the gigahertz range. I know anybody that follows the automotive industry is is seeing the. Uh, explosion of the features of uh, anti-collision radar in a lot of the cars and that and that and that's radar and uh, which is which is pretty cool I don't think the lane departure stuffs radar I think that's a kind of a camera looking at the white lines but I I could be wrong on that but anyway 